Melee is a long and storied esport, but every story needs a main character. So just who is Melee's protagonist? Manga was born in 1991 and started competing in Melee in 2007, at the young age of 15. Mango entered the melee scene with main character energy, full of life and saying to follow his ninja way. In his breakout tournament of EVO, he beat Mewtwo King, the best player in the world at the time, and Ken, the previous king of Smash, number one in the world for years before that, to place third at the tournament. And only half a year after that would go on to win his first major, Pound Free. In what is now a historic loser's run, the child prodigy would run through all of the best players at the time to take the event. Yes, all the adults at the event found this as annoying as you might expect. Then, to top off his early career, Mango would defend his country at Genesis from the Swedish underdog Armada, who had shown that he was a force to be reckoned with. However, Mango would make a once again historic grand finals and defeat Armada, all still while he was only a teenager. However, as we know, a good main character needs a great rival. So in the run back at Genesis 2, Armada would take it over Mango. This wasn't a set with his soul on the line though, and wouldn't result in a downturn in Mango's form. He would continue to pull off feats that would just seem impossible to others, but when the protagonist gets knocked down, they just get back up, and go on the loser's run of a lifetime. EVO 2013, The Big House 4, press start, all cementing Mango as someone that will win despite the odds. Almost as if the script of Melee favours him. Mango never being on top for long periods of time is a big point to him being the protagonist. I mean, we always need a new challenge, an arc for the story to follow. We saw him go through two years of a dry spell after another all-time great finals at Royal Flush by the way, he wouldn't win a tournament for all of 2018. You might have thought it was over for Mango's story, especially with his long-term rival Armada being sent to the Shadow Realm, his soul to never escape. But then in 2019, the scriptwriters finally gave him his big tournament. Even having some opponents give him wins from more seemingly impossible positions. This was ridiculous. Then ending the year in an incredible big house victory, and what would blossom a new rivalry, where during 2020 and onwards, he would have a legendary back and forth versus Zayn peaking in an incredible finish at the Smash Summit, where he would once again overcome seemingly impossible odds to come back versus Zayn and win the tournament, sending Zayn to join Armada and cementing himself as the greatest of all time. Mango's story as a player is filled with the impossible becoming possible, a perpetual underdog fighting his way to the top, playing in an unconventional way that people would admire as inconsistent only for him time and time again to prove them wrong, finally coming out on top of it all. And that's what makes Mango Melee's main character. The main character is a pretty cool thing, right? I mean, it makes sense that we would inevitably give this kind of status to a player who keeps doing things that seem impossible. And it's even cooler to see someone's personal story unfolding in front of your eyes. It gives emotion to any tournament you're watching, it makes the highs even higher, and the lows feel so truly low. I mean, without this kind of feeling, it would, all it would be is you would just be sitting there watching a guy playing a game. But it's that story that builds up behind them, their history, that really brings a tournament and an incredible run together. This isn't just exclusive to Smash though, it's what makes sports and esports incredible. Every game has a main character. The World Cup felt like Messi's personal victory, despite there being a whole team there behind him, and even a country. Worlds 2022, it was deft going all the way, against all of the odds, to beat his own rival. All of these stories of things happening that you feel you would only see in fiction, coming to life right in front of you. How could you not give them titles like the protagonist? Amsa was born in 1991, and has been competing in tournaments since 2012, at the age of 20. A relatively late start for anyone looking to make a future in a sport, being especially hard due to having to balance work and practice. But with Melee players all being a little bit older at that time, having a main character who's more relatable to the average audience member makes sense, doesn't it? That and his main character of choice being Yoshi, a character no one plays at a higher level, 
giving him that unique and underdog factor. Armsa had the makings of a great protagonist. After a year of grinding away though, Armsa decided to make his efforts worldwide and travelled to the US for EVO 2013, where he would place a respectable 25th, but he took a game off of one of the best players in the world, showing this man had potential. So he would spend the next year getting up at oh boy 3am to practice, only to spend the day at his job to go home and then practice as much as he could and do it all over again the next day. This training arc, if you will, would pay off, as in the next year, Armstrong would go worldwide again to the US to enter Apex 2014, where he would show the world just what he could do, placing ninth at that tournament. Then he would set his eyes on the top echelon of players, the five gods as they were called. For him to get to the top of this game with his dinosaur, he would need to make them look like the five dogs. And he would do just that, only a few months later, he beat Mewtwo King in a set nobody expected him to win. Man, I love Amsa, but can you see him taking a match? Eh. <laughs> Shocking the world and letting them know that Amsa was here to stay. However, the next few years would be more subtle. Nothing crazy in the way of wins, but more of that never-ending grind around his job, pushing himself to achieve what he dreamed. Then, in 2018, Amsa would reach a new level and began taking down the gods of the game, getting him the first ever ranking in the top 10 for a Yoshi player in the world. The only thing to do next was to beat all of the odds and do what no melee player had ever done. Talk to a woman. I mean, win a major with Yoshi. Unfortunately, due to 2020, Amsa was stuck in Japan with no way to play versus the best. It looked like he might fall behind the rest of the pack in this time. But when competition came back, Armstead decided to do what he needed to, and bet it all on a move to Canada, to allow him to buy unlimited amounts of maple syrup, show up in random TikToks, I'm bubbling the bomb! Oh, incredible! And put everything into his passion. He would come ever closer to that goal, getting second at Double Down. But then, at the most stacked tournament of all time, the Big House 10, Armstead would do the unthinkable, and go on the run of his life beating absolutely everybody and staring down Mango in Grand Finals. He would overcome this god of the game to finally win a major tournament with Yoshi, proving that even a salary man from Japan playing a mid-tier character can become the best in the world, despite all of the odds, with enough hard work you can achieve your dream. And that inspiring story is why Amsa is the main character of Mesh. There are so many people that play Melee, that play any game or sport, that the protagonist of that sport is ever-changing depending on when or what you're watching. In one moment, Mango is the main character of his story. In the next, Amsa the main character of his. This doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't a protagonist. I mean, new seasons of shows often can swap out a protagonist once their story has been told. Last year it was Death Story, but years before that, it was Fakers. This is what makes the natural storytelling of sport so appealing. Despite it not being planned, if you pay attention over the years, new stories naturally form, maybe without you even noticing. For as long as there are people playing, a new main character will step up to carry the torch without even so much as an author. Zayn started playing Melee in 2013, the same year as the resurgence of Melee with Evo and the Smash documentary. The same year a lot of others started playing, but Zayn stood out from the crowd, allowing him to rise quickly through the ranks, beating Plup in 2016 and then Leffen in 2017, when in 2018, only 5 years after his start, he would win Shine 2018 over Mango and Hungrybox. Zayn's incredible work ethic and talent to learn are a trait that could only make him the main character. Hungrybox, after years of trying to be the best in the world, couldn't break through the walls of the likes of Armada and Mango consistently until he decided to get help from his good friend Crunch. And together with his coaching, they formed strategies that would help him topple the other gods. And after a landmark win over Armada at Dreamhack, the ball only kept rolling. And at EVO 2016, he would defy the odds and come back from the clutches of defeat to make the impossible possible. Truly making him the main character of men, fighting against his own depression and the world around him. 
fighting against himself to try and be the best version of himself, PPMD would come back to attend Apex 2015, where the world expected nothing of him. He would fight through all the obstacles he needed to, to make history by being the first Sheik to ever win a major. Coming seemingly out of nowhere to the rest of the world, Jmook had been grinding it away. While everyone else got their turn, he did his best knowing he would get his. And here it was. He'd finally done it. Despite all of the setbacks, his health trying to tear him down, seemingly the whole world not wanting him to succeed, with a stubborn vigor, Cody keeps pushing on to make this story his. And that is what makes him the main, main character, character of, of Melee. Melee. I think, shocker I know, but to call a single player the main character of Melee, or to say that someone has plot armor would do the esport of Smash as a whole a disservice. Fighting games are great because there are storylines everywhere, thanks to our open brackets. There are storylines playing out all around you if you just give them the time of day. I mean, look around, even the random math that are behind you can become a legendary set out of nowhere. There is probably some guy playing his last tournament that day. Maybe even no one knows about a swan song to a game that he's just given his all to. A guy who's attending his first tournament who could be the next big player. Someone who just beat their bracket demon for the first time in round two of bracket. But not everyone will know, yet on that day, those people are the main characters of their own stories. So don't think of a single player as the main character, because you're losing out on your own enjoyment. This isn't a side character getting in the way of your protagonist. This is another protagonist fighting for their life, so that today is the day that their story reaches even a few more people. So every plot armor moment for one person is the fool of another main character. And that's just so sick. There's so many stories to be found out there in our many communities that make sports so cool. My favorite melee moments aren't even to do with the top 100. It's these moments where my friends pulled out a victory of a lifetime or nearly made the greatest comeback ever. So why not get out there yourself and sign up for your own bracket and have a chance for your story to be heard by even one more person. And hey, maybe I'll be there someday cheering it on. Don't go just yet because before I thank the patrons, I need to tell you about Crescendo, a UK tournament happening in Bristol and it's got a 128 man cap. The first one was absolutely incredible, great food, great venue, I mean, what more could you want? If you're near Bristol on the 28th of January, sign up and come say hi. I'll be there and I always want to say hi to you guys. As always, you can find my patron in the description where you can get access to our new Discord for as low as $1 a month. If even 1% of the people watching my stuff did that, it could honestly change my life, just unironically. Thank you as always to my current beautiful patrons, Biss, Dan Landon, Jarek Ford, Beefsteak, Snugs, and Grant Klein. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.